Welcome to this, our first episode in the new Guild Wars Let's Play series. You're with Sambo as always, and joining me tonight is the wonderful, the sharp-witted, the even sharper-tongued Regina Lacerda. How are you this evening? I'm good, Sambo, and that's quite a, um, a reputation I have to try and fulfill now. <laughs> hey, I know you in real life. <laughs> I was toning it down. Trust me, viewers, I was toning it down. I uh, just got to say, as always, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you on board this new Let's Play series. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us as we journey through Ascalon and beyond. And on that note, let's get right into it, folks. As you can see here, I have a blank character slot in the Guild Wars character select screen. Um, all we have to do, obviously, is hit the create button and what pops up straight away is a choice between a role-playing character and a PvP only character. We'll get into the differences of that later on, but if you're here to play the MMO, play through the storyline, level your character from 1 up to level 20, the choice you need to make is role-playing character. If you are here for the PvP side only of Guild Wars, which by the way is incredibly strong, um, you would choose PvP only character. But for now we'll just choose a role playing, hit the next button and that should take us, whoops, hit the next button, take us through to a selection of which campaign we want to play with. Now um, Reggie, you made the choice for us earlier, what are we doing here? Are we doing Nightfall, are we doing Factions or are we doing the good old um, Vanilla Prophecies campaign? Well, I'm a simple girl, so I decided to go with the vanilla. Um, I just felt that prophecy sort of sets the whole storyline, really. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. I don't agree with the simple girl thing, as our viewers will find out over time, I'm sure. <laughs> However, for the folks at home who haven't played Guild Wars before, let's take it in reverse order. Nightfall is one of the most recent expansions. Uh, it came out a couple of years ago. So it was the uh, second expansion, or the third game, if you like, in this series. Introduced a lot of new stuff. Um, Factions, obviously, was the first expansion to come out. And right back at the beginning, uh, what was originally just called Guild Wars, they've now named Prophecies, just so you can distinguish it from the other two expansions. So Prophecies, as Reggie says, starts right back at the very beginning of the game and sets up the storyline. There's a great storyline uh, in the Guild Wars series, and if you haven't played Prophecies before, uh, and you jump into Factions or Nightfall, which, by the way, you can do. You don't have to actually start a character in Prophecies and work your way up. You can start in any of the expansions. If you do that, though, however, you're probably going to miss out on a lot of the rich lore that's going on in the world, and a couple of things may not make sense. So uh, let's choose Prophecies and move on. Obviously, the next thing we need to do is choose our class, or as they're called in Guild Wars, Profession. Now, what bears in what well rather what you need to bear in mind is that in Guild Wars you can actually have two professions. Now, uh, Reggie, what did you choose for your first profession for this new character of yours? Well, I've actually gone from for my personal favourite, which is a ranger. Ranger. Okay. Mhm. Mm all right, so look, we were discussing this earlier, and because we're going to be a dastardly duo roaming throughout this world, uh, we want to obviously have something that's symbiotic. So I think your advice was, hey, look, as long as you choose something other than Ranger for your first profession, Sambo, uh, we'll do fine. Is that right? Pretty much. All right, okay. In that case, I choose you, Pikachu. No, I'm... You know, I, I, I know I should be a warrior, but I am I really feel like being the pocket healer, uh, or as you put it the other day, the healing bitch. And um, what, I can do <laughs> what I can do later on, obviously, is then um, spec into warrior as my secondary profession. So once again, for you guys at home, don't worry too much if you choose something and it doesn't uh, resonate with your playstyle because what you can do later on in the game is actually choose a second class if you like so you're actually make made up of two so you could for example just be a pure monk in the game and stay with that class for the entire game or you may wish to choose a monk and a necromancer or a monk and a ranger or whatever you like and that's one of the great things uh, about Guild Wars is how flexible its profession system is and it's all about the skills that those professions bring to the table and obviously we'll get into that a bit later on as we get into the game proper but for now I'm gonna choose a monk 
And then obviously we get a choice of male or female. I wouldn't be Sambo unless I chose a female. Um, shut up, Reggie. <laughs> and let's quickly make her look pretty. They all look pretty in this game. It's nice and easy. There's no um, in-depth mucking about. As you can see, as I hover my mouse over the various aspects here, we've got hairstyle. As I hover it over that, they all come up and I can just choose whatever I like. I'm going to choose, there we go, some pigtails. We've got our hair color. We've got five to choose from there. We'll just go for a nice uh, monkish blonde. We have face, and again, you you're can... very predictable. The female and the pigtails. I know, I know, I know. But you know, look, <laughs> I, I am a uh, looking like a Shaolin monk, so I think it is appropriate. <clears throat> he says under his breath. Anyway, let's find ourselves a nice, pretty face here, or rather, actually, I don't want a super pretty face. I want a determined face. Boy, there's some really interesting ones in here. Not, not to my liking. That one's. That one's got a big mouth. Sorry, Reggie. I, you know me. I'm very fussy about my looks. Um, not in real life, but uh, <laughs> when it comes to creating my character. <laughs> I was about to say something there. Yeah, yeah. I preempted you yet again. This is going to be nasty, I can tell. Uh, skin color. There you go, folks. We've got seven different skin tones to choose from. Being a monk, I'm probably going to go for something rather pale, as if I've never seen the light of day, much like my real self once again. Let's hit next. Uh, the next options we have are body scale. I must admit, when it's these little monks, I do like being little, so I'm going to make myself teeny weeny. By the way, Reggie, did you make yourself big, huge, small? What what size are you? I'm not the tiniest, but I have made myself petite. All right, petite. That's a good word it's for a it. wonderful I'll... thing about creating a character. Yeah. You I... never can make it look like... <laughs> Anything you like, which is what I love. That's it. I'm going to do the same... Um, now, now you'll have to help me here. I can't remember. Uh, we're on the color selection screen. And by the way, for you guys at home, this is great because you can actually separately color uh, the clothing on your head, chest, hands, legs, and feet, or you can coordinate it. So, for example, if I choose legs here and go ahead and select purple, as you can see, we can make ourselves have purple legs and, say, a green top, uh, a brown chest, you name it. We can make ourselves a veritable Napolit... What are the, what's that ice cream with all the different colours? Nap Napolitana or something? Napolitana? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. We can make ourselves one of them. I'm not going to be that silly, though. We're just going to stick to the standard monk-looking beige. Now, what is, Reggie, what is this symbol? I always forget. Um, up near the head creator, it's got a show tick, and it's got a, a little pattern. What is that? Do you know what that is? Uh, that's... That's some sort of facial adornment thing. Each character has different, like some have a mask, some have just like a, a cloth over their mouth, some have a tattoo. Uh, and whether it's you actually can see that or not, I, it doesn't affect the gameplay whatsoever, really. Okay, great. Well, we'll thank you for pretty that. Pretty we'll, we'll leave that on because we want to be as prettied up as possible. So there you have it, folks. Nice and quick in and out of the character creation screen because um, Guild Wars doesn't make a huge song and dance about it. And to be honest, the costumes in the game, the armor that you get, are fantastic. Um, and don't let this very basic outfit fool you. Uh, you'll love some of the items that you'll come across later on in the game. Let's hit next. Here we go. And now we're up to the character name. Now, an interesting thing about Guild Wars is that you can have two names that's right so you can have a first name and a surname and i think when... you actually have to have two names oh, i think oh actually i'm just reading now you're dead mm. right and the other great thing about guild wars is that the friends status and we'll show you this once we get in game and and meet up with um R reggie <clears throat> they're actually keyed off your account not your character name so uh, i think uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Reggie, but as soon as you make friends with somebody in a game, if they log in with any other character on their account, you'll see them in in your own friends list. That's right, isn't it? <clears throat> well, I think it is. Uh, we made a double check, but I think that once you log in, the character that you log in with, the name changes in the friends list. Right, right. I could be wrong. No, I think you're right, which means it's at, at, at an account... Uh, account level so that's great because you don't have to worry about updating all your friends lists every time a real-life friend or online friend makes a new alt so 
let's give ourselves a name. Um, we've been using Seraphis in the new villainous DC Universe Online Let's Play, and we used Seraphis in the new Rift uh, Let's Play series. So let's do it again here in Guild Wars. I need a surname. Um, oh my god, what is my surname going to be? What am I? A monk. Seraphis. Um, I should have thought of this ahead of time. Seraphis shouldn't I? heals a lot. Heal. Hang on. Heal. <laughs> Heals a <laughs> lot. That's so original. I love it. Right, let's go with that and see if it'll allow that name. And it let me in. And here we go, folks. It's connecting to the game now. By the way, Guild Wars streams in data. If it ever updates, updates, you never have to patch, really. And we're probably going to get a cutscene now. So we'll join you again once this finishes. There we go. The last day dawns on the kingdom of Ascalon. It arrives with no fanfare, no tolling of alarms. Those who will remember will speak fondly of the warm morning breeze. People carry on with their daily lives, unaware that in a short while, Everything they have ever known will come to an end. Scribe? Yes, my lord. These char are relentless. But we shall hold the wall at all costs. Yes, my lord. Take this message to Sir Titus. Go forth and recruit the strongest, the smartest. Bring to me the bravest in all of Ascalon. Find me the heroes who will lead our kingdom to glory. As you command, the king. And there you have it folks and that's another great thing I like about this game is that all the cutscenes are done in engine they're not pre-rendered lovely jubbly and as it says there we're now in Ascalon City outpost and we'll take a quick tour through the UI but what I want to know firstly is Reggie where are you have you abandoned me already I'm not I'm in district 2 Oh, well, you know have what? Have you materialized in a different district? That's right. So that's a good opportunity to explain to people what the hell we're talking about. If you'll have a look up here in the top left of my corner, I've got a drop-down box, and it allows us to flick through all the various instances of the game. And they do this to make sure that no zones are overpopulated. So um, if one zone gets too busy, what they'll do is they'll actually create another instance of the same game uh, and name it, in this case, um, American English District 1 or District 2 or whatever it might be. Now, I happen to have zoned into Europe English District 1. So I'm absolutely miles away from wherever you are. You're in where? America? American English District 2. All right. So uh, District 1, sorry. District 1. So as you can see, folks, it's very easy to actually choose which instance I go to and which part of the world I'm playing at. So let's... Um, teleport ourselves there the game will just briefly reload and it means that you're always going to be able to find your friends very easily um, in the same instance whoops unfortunately for me it teleported us into the city which is not good dear oh dear that's all right we'll quickly make our way to where Reggie is so close your eyes, folks. Don't look at this for some reason. It didn't teleport us to the beginning of the game, but that's okay. Well, this just proves that this is done live. Well, it does prove that it's done live. There's no photoshopping, no shenanigans going on here. We're raw, live coming to you. Now, I'm surprised I've already got myself a cape. How did I get in our guild already? Is it because we're on the same account? That's interesting. Oh, it look at indeed. this. 
Hello, Regina. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I remembered how to wave. Look at you, pretty with flowers in your hair. I love the look of the rangers in this game. They're absolutely fantastic. And you've gone purple. Will you ever create a character that doesn't have purple on it? Seriously. I'm oh, sorry. Those words do not make sense to me. Yeah, there we go. She's being smart already. Okay, folks. Let's take a quick tour, very brief tour, around the UI and uh, around what we're seeing on the screen, just to get it out of the way. Now, I'm presuming, by the way, I must be in our guild um, because I've got a cape. Um, not sure quite how that happened because we didn't add me to the guild. It must be account-based. But firstly, you can see as I hover over Reggie there, obviously we can see her name. And you'll see at the end of her name uh, some little yellow letters, T-O-T-U, which, by the way, is an acronym for the name of our guild, which is Tears of the Underworld. So I can tell not only that she is already in a guild just by hovering over her, but I can also tell she's in my guild because it's bright yellow and other guilds won't show up as that bright yellow. So that's a handy little thing there. As we look around <coughs> the screen... If I can give you another... Yeah. Sorry, just to interrupt. If I can give you another um, little handy thing to know about the guilds, if you play further expansions of the Guild Wars, the um, guild stays with you. So in factions, you're still in the same guild, and um, in Nightfall, and I assume my north. Well, I did not know that. That's fantastic, because it just saves having to reset up all your guild connections if you change characters or change fa um, campaigns. Thanks for that. Did not know that. Um, as you'll see, guys, it's sort of familiar as like most MMOs. We've got up in the top right-hand corner, we've got a mini-map. Now... Uh, what may not be familiar to some of you is that that's actually spinning around. Can you remember, Reggie, whether that's an option in the game to have the mini-map spinning or not? I honestly can't remember. Um, I'm having a look through here. No, that part of it escapes me, I must admit. Yeah, now let's have a look. Interface. So we can turn the compass on and off, but it doesn't look like we can actually... Let's have a look. Looking through... I looking. think you can have a bigger or a square mini-map. Right. I believe that um, I'm going to make a reference here to someone that people don't know. Meatball's mini map appears different than my own. Oh, okay. So your your playing partner, he um, he's got it set up differently. Yeah. So, mm. all right. Looks like you can do that, but you can't stop it spinning. But that's okay. Um, what is different about the mini map here, folks, is obviously whoops we can zoom in and out there obviously um, but there's a really cool feature there's a couple of really cool features about this uh, mini map now for a start we can see if I just move away from Reggie for a moment now it is going to be very small on your YouTube screen so I apologize but for a start she shows up there as a blue dot so I can always see where my um, friend is or where another player is rather um, you'll see around me is a white uh, circle. Now that there is actually the area of effect in terms of the the distance that my spells uh, can actually reach. So um, that's really important to watch as, when you're in combat because you're able to tell whether or not creatures are in range and that will always be there and it will change as your skill sets change. So that's what that's about. But one of the most fun things I think and useful things uh, about the Guild Wars minimap is Actually, do you want to demonstrate it? Because I bet you you know, Reggie, what I'm about to do. Do you? I uh, not, not a reader. <laughs> no? All right. It's one of the... I think it must be a boy thing because I just love doing this because we end up doing uh, rude things on it, but I won't today. Um, watch me, folks. Watch the top right there on the mini-map. Look at that. Yes, you can draw on the minimap. Now, why is that good? It's because if I'm in a group and we're in a particular area that has a specific path we have to go, everyone in the party will see this. And in fact, it wouldn't have worked because we're not in a party anyway, Reggie. Whoops, my bad. But what we can do is we can say, hey, guys, you have to go around here and up that way. And everyone will see that on who's in our party. Or, of course, we can circle an area and say, hey, that's where we need to head to. So let's... You know, Sambo, I have to learn something new. Oh, is that right? Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know what? I don't have to tell you, I'm sure, of all sorts, the sorts of things that used to go on in terms of drawings on that mini-map. We won't go there. What we do want to do is, is, is learn how to invite uh, Reggie to our party. Now, right under the mini-map there, you'll see 
a window that says party formation one of two now at this stage of the game we are actually limited to the size our party can be as we grow up through the world our party size will increase uh, it'll go right out to eight but for now we're limited to two and I think they do that deliberately just to try and keep things under control when you're learning a new game and what we do in here is you can see I'm obviously the first member of the party and I can click on myself to select myself um, but there's a plus under there. Now what I can do is I can actually type in Regina Lasseta and hit the plus and hopefully... Well, you could just click on my character. Oh! There we go. Click on your character and will that populate the name field, will it? Yes, it will. Right, let's try that again because I don't believe her because that would save heaps and heaps of ty typing We've put our cursor in there. We'll click on her name. Oh, I didn't click on her name though I clicked on something else that would be right um, I'm coming back. There we go. We'll click on her and she's right. It's there. So let's invite her and What's happened? I'll accept that You'll accept that. There we go. And now you can see there's the two of us in the party. Now, um, when I've got her selected, I and again, get used to selecting people in this party list. It's generally the best place to select them rather than out in the world. It's a lot easier to do it from this list, which will grow as our party gets bigger. Um, but I can click on her, and of course, I can click kick, um, or I can click leave, which will make me leave from the party. Now, that leads me on to the next part of the interface, which is down the bottom left here. And it's our chat interface. Now, when you play the game, you'll notice that you've got a little speech bubble. I can click that on and off, and you can see the entire chat UI toggling between on and off. Now, the good thing about it is when it's off, it still displays chat. Um, Reggie, would you be able to just say anything in, you know, in general? You don't have to whisper me or anything. I don't mind. Say something nice. Say anything in chat room. <clears throat> and we'll watch as that actually comes up. There you go. Anything about Sambo? <laughs> oh dear, I'm going to live to regret these. I know it. Um, as you can see, you can remove all the clutter from the screen if you so wish, and still the text will come up. However, you may want to have this up for a while because it does a number of things. Firstly, we've got these tabs along the bottom, and they, they are basically the channels that we're chatting in. So we've got All, Guild, Team, Trade, Alliance, and Whisper. So for example, Whisper. If I click on that, I can either type someone's name in or presumably click somebody's name there. And I've got a drop down list. There's Regina's name, and I can go, hello, enter. And that has come up in a different color on my chat window. And that's actually sent her a private message. So that's not being broadcast out into the world. Um, in this case, we're in a team. So I'm going to click team, and I'm going to go, hello. And you can see it's come up. So what are you wearing? Are you giving me heaps about what I'm wearing? <laughs> she's, not at all. No, she's she's um, not happy with my burlap sackcloths. But anyway, um, I am in the team chat now, and that's come up as blue. So that's going to mean that anything that comes up there is obviously from someone in my team. Now, whenever you're playing the game, obviously you, like any other MMO, you're in a local group, uh, local chat channel, you're in um, trade. You can actually just simply untick these uh, boxes across the top, which are channel filters. So, for example, you can see there there's quite a bit of chat going on. Uh, in my chat window. If I turn off trade, watch all that sort of pinky color text, it disappears. If I turn off local, that all disappears. Alliance, um, you name it, you've, it's up to you. And you can just leave it with um, the text that you want so you don't miss any messages. And of course, you can always just turn them back on and it is retrospective. Anything that was said while you had that filter off will still come up. So it's actually quite a good chat system once you get used to it. Finally, we also have up the uh, top left, we have a mission map. Now, I know you guys are going to say, wait a minute, what's going on? We've got a mini map over on the top right, and we have a mission map over here on the top left. What on earth is the difference? Well, for a start, you can actually resize it. As you can see, you can pretty much move and resize any element of the UI. So it's a great UI for that. Um, what the mission map shows is when we're actually in a mission, which we'll get to later, it actually leaves a path of where you've been uh, and it shows objectives specific to that mission. So 
It's actually really handy for getting around, especially if you die and you have to backtrack and try and figure out where the hell you'd been. There's all these little red ant trails everywhere, uh, and we'll get into that as we get into a mission later. Also, of course, like any other um, MMO, if we hit the... Oh, I thought it was the map M key. Where's our map? There we are, M for map. That brings up your world map. Um, and <clears throat> at the moment, we're only stuck in the starter zone, so it's not very big. You can't get an idea of the scale of the game, which, by the way, is huge. Uh, but there's a very special feature about the map, and that is map travel. Unlike every other MMO out there, in order to travel to a different part of the world, and here you can see I've got a little pin over the Ascalon City area, you can actually do what's called map traveling. And all you need to do is click on it, like that, and it will say, hey, there's a description about the area that you're going to travel to and you just would literally click the travel button and it would zone you straight there. So it really avoids the mindless running around in order to get somewhere fast and I love it. Some people don't like, like it, they think it breaks immersion and all the rest of it but I think it's a great feature. Um, one more thing before poor old Regina falls over asleep. Let's get rid of that spam out of our chat. There we go. Um, down the bottom should be very obvious. It's our skill bar. And we have a couple of bars uh, above that. Obviously, red is our health. We've got 100 health there. And what the other bar is, is our energy. In my case, I think. Is that right, Reggie? Do monks use energy? I can't remember the name of name of the resource, to be honest. Um, I suppose energy... Yeah, I mean, there's even, there's, all professions use some sort of spell that use the energy. There's right, no good. We'll call it energy for now, even if we're wrong. Um, one thing to note, folks, is that although I have 30, you might notice that there's four right-hand facing arrows. And this will come up a lot in the game as well. What that's showing is the amount of regen that I'm currently um, experiencing. So for example if there was only one right facing arrow there it would mean that my mana regen rate has been paralyzed and it's not going to, oh, okay I said mana, energy regen you rate has said been, mana already. I know I've said it, God wow has a lot to answer for. Um, what could also happen though, so it's a great indicator, what, about it. what could happen is that we have a leftward facing arrow which means I've actually got a debilitating uh, debuff on me so an energy is being sapped by some kind of nasty debuff and so those indicators actually become really really strategically useful later on in the game and you'll see why one more thing is um, you have an option as you can see here I'm clicking on the ground to move about um, you can use WASD which is what I'm doing there or you can click on the ground another great thing is you can actually click on the names of um, individuals or on um, people like as you've seen there I've just clicked on the town crier I'm gonna run away for a second because this makes it really easy to navigate town cry is um, highlighted I just literally click once on it and my character automatically moves to within interaction range of that NPC and it's the same for objects in the game um, and in fact if uh, where are we here we go if I was to select Reggie you might say hey how come I'm not moving to her um, what I do is I use my use key which in Guild Wars is spacebar. Now you're going to get very intimately familiar with the spacebar in this game. If I hit space, look what happens. It means I go up to her because, and forgive me Reggie, I'm using Regina. So it means that it's just going to make me walk That's up to her. That's normal. <laughs> well because you're a player, it, it, you behave differently than a um, an NPC. Whereas as you can see there, I just have to click on them. Whereas Reggie, I may want to select um, because I want to put a heal on her or something like that and I don't want to go running to her automatically so the game recognizes that and I actually have to hit the space bar and I will find her so that's a useful thing to know um, the inventory if if you're ever wondering whereabouts your character sheet is it's pretty much in the inventory window here you can see we've got a number of slots we'll get into it later for bags we have one backpack at the moment which holds 20 down there there's our character in the middle which you can spin around these are our items here hover over them just like any in uh, MMO and it tells us what the stats are um, in this case I'm looking at a white so an uncommon hand wrap it's got plus five energy and five armor yet below me are some pants which are blue and that means that they've got some stat on them so they're customized for me which means they're bound the um, bound or unbound items that you normally find in something like WoW soulbound they're called customized here 
in Guild Wars. If you have an, uh, a piece of equipment that's customized, you can't trade that to another player. So it's just like being soulbound. Um, but as you'll see, they're blue because they actually have a stat on them, Energy Recovery Plus 1. Now that Energy Recovery Plus 1 stat is what's causing these arrows down here. Okay, it's actually increasing my recovery rate of energy. And Reggie, we were right about the energy. It is energy. 10 points to us already. Woo! I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Um, you'll see that I have... <laughs> Don't say mana again, though. No, okay. What's my penalty for using the word mana? I guess you'll have to think about it. We'll have to come up with a penalty of some description. Um, you have to buy me a car. You have to buy... <laughs> All right, you heard it here, folks. If I say the M word one more time, I have to buy Reggie a car. Oh boy, this is definitely going to be rough. Um, you'll see a couple of a couple of icons up here. These are your status for hiding your cape, and you can choose to hide it in towns and outposts, or hide it in combat areas, or always hide it. So if I choose always, you'll see my cape disappears there. We're just going to always show it for now, and it's the same with your little um, headband thing up the top. Um, another quick look at the hero screen here. Heroes, you might think what's going on there. At this stage of the game, it's just basically showing us faction, our, our um, faction with a particular deity in this case. We'll get into that later. It's showing us any titles. If any of you out there have played Lord of the Rings Online, you'll be familiar with how this works. Basically, you have to do quests, kill mobs, do a whole bunch of stuff. In this case, if we hover over it, look at that. Um, you will earn the title Treasure Hunter once you open 100 high-end locked <coughs> chests. In this case, you'll earn the title Skills when you reach 1,000 Gamer Points, etc, etc. And there's tons, actually hundreds of titles in Guild Wars that are all designed to make you have something to aim for and work very hard at, I might add. And as you can see here, we've got our details about our account name. So. Um, the other important thing up here is our skill points. The whole game is driven by skills, and it's driven, and they in fact are, drill, are, are, are rather driven by how many skill points you have. That's a currency that you need in order to buy your skills. And at the moment, you can see I've got zero skill points are required when purchasing skills from trainers. Uh, you have spent zero of the zero skill points you have earned. We'll get into that later on as we gain some skills. And speaking of skills, if you hit K. That's the letter K, you'll come up into this screen, and you know what, this is actually going to be one of the uh, most used screens you will use outside of your bags. Um, it's not showing us much at the moment, we'll get into that later as we do gain some skill points. The other um, essential for any MMO of course is L, our quest log, we've got nothing in there at the moment, it behaves pretty much the same way as any other uh, MMO's quest log. Very quickly now. N. N brings up your friends. As you can see here, Reggie Lacerda is a friend of mine. I did not friend her this session, and you saw I made a character straight away. That's because it's bound to an account, so she's automatically appearing in my friends list. I can click on her, send her a whisper, do all sorts of things. Pretty standard stuff. Um, we also have... where is it? Um, oh yes, this is the one. The party search screen. And this comes in very handy later on when you're wanting to do things. For example, it gets quite specific. As you can see here, we can drop this down and say, hey, we're looking for people to help us on a particular quest. We can enter a description of that quest, um, and we can say we want to seek a party. And that will say, come up in a search and say, hey, Reggie and um, me, Seraphis, we're looking for help with the XYZ quest, or just generic hunting, or we're looking for a guild in this case, case or... Um, a particular mission and as you can see in this results tab here if I uh, expand it out it's actually breaking it up into the different things so you can see there there's a warrior elementalist level 16 who is wanting to go out uh, and do some hunting and he's got a party size of one out of two and he's actually said there he's looking for a group to do a specific thing so the searching in this game is actually quite powerful and very useful I think, um, Reggie, that's sort of covered off the basics for now, isn't it? Because otherwise you're going to fall asleep out of boredom. Anything else I've missed that's major? I can't think of anything else that people need to know straight away. All right. Well, without further ado then, because what are we up to? We've got about 10 minutes left in this, our first episode. Shall we speak to the quest giver and see what he has to say? Let's do it. I think we should. All right, so there you go. Excuse me, Seraphis heals a lot, and yeah, thanks for that name, Reggie. Um, 
Your Seraphis heals a lot, aren't you? I think Sir Titus was looking for you. Now, Sir Titus is a big character in the game. He's a big name. He comes back to haunt you lots and lots. Uh, just like any other game, it's telling you straight away what you're going to get, which is 100 XP and 10 gold. Now, actually, that's something I need to... We'll accept that, by the way. There you go. I need to remember where our XP is. There it is. It's in the hero screen, if anyone's wondering. It's not actually out on the front uh, of the UI. You actually have to go into the uh, hero screen there and you can see the XP bar. Um, there is one other thing too that I missed. I'm just looking at it right now, which is weapon sets. Um, I think we'll, we'll skip that and do it later on. So have you picked up that quest? I have indeed. All right. I'm going to follow you because you are our glorious leader uh, throughout the world of Ascalon uh, and we want to follow you from the rear. For no reason other Famous than... last word, Simbo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So at the moment, again, I'm using my WASD key. In Guild Wars, I actually do end up using the click to move key quite a lot. And as you'll see, if you remember, I can click on his name there, and it takes me straight to him. It actually brings up the dialogue straight away. So there we go. We're going to accept, accept that. And we've immediately got ourselves... Let's have a look in our inventory. We've got 10 gold. And as it says there, 1,000 gold is worth one platinum. And if we hit H, you can see the little bars started there. We've got 100 XP out of our 2,000. <clears throat> so, what's he saying? He's saying mention, travel... Um, when... Hmm? Sorry, when talking about um, moving around, should we mention about the auto run key? Oh, yes, please. Actually, you... I'm, I'm going to not accept yeah, this quest. Hit... How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you hit... R on the keyboard your character will automatically run and then you can just use your um, right and left direction key to move them around. Oh Being look at that. Dimmer, I actually use the arrow keys. Okay all right that's really good I didn't know that. So there you go we've traded tit for tat tonight you've learned something I've learned something I call it even. We're back on an even footing I owe you nothing. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Now, the what, car. Yeah I'll accept the car. For God's sake, don't say the M word, Sambo. Um, one other quick thing that um, I just I discovered late in my Guild Wars career, you'll notice that we're looking down over a town, and there are lots of people out there, uh, and they're mixed in with NPCs. Now, here's a neat little trick if you're playing from home: hold down the control key and look at that. The entire screen fills with all the actual real players that are in here. Now, let me remind you that this game, as you know, is over six years old. This is the starting zone. Look how many people are in here. It's a real testament. It stood the, te the test of time. Fantastic game. Anyhow, I'm holding control. There are all the people here. So, as you know, clicking on a... Uh, a player's name and hitting spacebar will take me straight there. So if Reggie was somewhere out in the big wide open there amongst all those people, I could hold down control. In fact, oh, good one. Look, she's any opportunity she's got to run away from me, just like real life, <laughs> she does. Okay, so there you go. You can see her. Not only does she stick out because she's in dark blue and she's got the uh, Tears of the Underworld tag on her, but holding down control, I can immediately see her and it goes through the geometry. Now, if I let go, Look at that. We would have absolutely no clue where she is. It's a great trick. And if I click on her, it selects her. And if I hit space, there we go. We're going to run towards her. Now, we won't just go there just yet because I still have to pick up my quest. But the other neat thing about this is there's it's not just restricted to, and here she comes, not just restricted to player characters. You can also do it for NPCs. And this is really handy if you're trying to find a merchant or if you're trying to find the chest, which is your storage, and we'll get to that later. Hold down the Alt key. So it's the Alt key. And as you can see there, we've got a NPC which is a skills NPC. We've got a couple of named NPCs, a couple of guards, and most importantly down there we've got a merchant. Uh, so that would be where you'd go. So it's nice that they're labelled in order to sell your vendor trash and buy new gear. So once again, Alt key to find any NPC, Control key to find any um, player character, and other than that you can just actually hover over general areas and they come up. So. Where are we? We need to speak to Sir Titus. Poor, poor old Regina, she's probably done that half an hour ago. What's he want us to do? He wants us to travel to the southwest gate, which will take you to the Lakeside County, and he will have Siglo the Monk waiting for us outside, and he can show you a trick or two. Now, 
this is where we probably um, have slightly separate objectives. I'd imagine that you've been told to go to a ranger trainer. Would that be right? I've been told to go to Artemis the ranger. Right. Indeed. Okay. Um, now in Lakeside County. Okay, so we're both in Lakeside County. As you can see on my quest log here, I just hit L to bring that up. Any um, important areas or NPC people are highlighted in green, so you can very quickly see who you need to go and talk to. Um, and before we finish off this episode, I guess we should explain how this works in terms of how the world works and what it means by saying going to Lakeside County. I'm sure you know where we need to go. Do you want to take us there? Why not, indeed. In fact, let's follow... I've got my little glowy green star. That's the one. We'll... Now, by the way, you can see Reggie is off. I'm not actually holding any keys down. Because I've hit the space bar and she's moving, I'm continuously, automatically um, running towards her. So that's how that works. Now, what happened was we, we wouldn't went through. Have to move at all. We went through. No, I don't have to do anything. We went through a portal. So we're just going to stop <laughs> there. <laughs> Um, oh look, we should, we've got our weapons out now, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're now in Lakeside County, uh, yeah, County, um, but looking behind us, that there is actually a portal. It may not come up too well on the YouTube video, but um, let's go back in. Now notice what happens when um, Reggie goes through, if you can go on ahead of me by the way, go back into the city. Mm -hmm. um, because we're in a party, she will pull me through no matter where I am. So, um, yep, off you go. And hopefully, as you'll see her disappear there, there we go. So because she's gone back into the city and we're in a party, I get to go as well. So um, let's have a look behind us. And there you can see a shimmering portal. So the way the game works is that through that portal is an instance of Lakeside County. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that when Reggie goes through there again and takes me with her, um, that is going to create a special instance just for us two, which means no ganking, no annoying trying to fight for mobs, no nothing. That instance of the world, which is the same as everyone else gets to see, only has us two in it. And that's the core foundation of how Guild War Wars works. So whilst we're in these towns, which people tend to call hubs, um, it is, whoops, there's my timer. It is actually fully multiplayer and everyone is here in real time and all the rest of it. But on the other side of that portal, it's just whoever's in your party. So I think that kind of explains how the instances and hubs work. And by the way, on the mini-map, you'll see that there's a shiny pin there. Um, that means it's a hub, and as you can see, Lakeside County outside of it is a instance. And the map is blurry at the moment, and that's to indicate areas that you've explored or not explored. And that will change as we run around. So, I think that's quite enough for our first um, rundown of all the features and things in here. Is there anything else you can think of off the top of your head that we've really missed out before we say goodbye? Nothing huge that won't get caught up later on. Yeah, I think so. So we'll leave it there folks, we've gone over time which is the usual way, sorry about that. But we're all set up, we have in our quest log here our very first quest which is going to take us out to our individual class trainers. For me it's the monk trainer, for Reggie it's her wonderful ranger trainer. They'll probably be in different areas in Lakeside County so we'll have to go uh, jointing around and we'll follow each other as we do. But until then, thank you for joining us Reggie and thank you for not being too nasty to me. Time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. If that's not a setup, I don't know what is. Uh, of course, on a serious note, once again, we do appreciate you joining us on this. Look forward to having you with us on the next episode. So on behalf of Reggie and myself, Sambo, and of course, our wonderful characters, um, it's time to say goodbye. Hope you're having a great day. See you then. Bye-bye.